Network operations. We saw a lot of topics starting with SD-WAN, then we went deeper into SD-LAN, the security functions, integrations. Let's take a uh, step back and see how easy it is to onboard devices into the fabric, installation, day one, day two operations. If there is a problem, what kind of tools we have to go dig deeper, troubleshoot. So let's spend some time on that one. Samuel, you want to go through this? Yes, um, no, go through it because I'm, co I'm connecting your phone to the computer. Okay, no, I got it. This is his favorite slide, so he mentioned to me multiple times that he wants to cover that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the way we're doing, uh, you're gonna see this in action, but the way we're doing this is, first of all, the project manager, not necessarily the network engineer that knows all the, all, all the details about the, the project, then the project manager logs into Central, Central has a role-based access and we can expose buttons here and there uh, quite easily. So you log into Central and you have a set of sites that you're gonna deploy. Okay, you, you have, in my example, I had Salzburg, I had Oakmead, I had Mexico. Okay, so those sites I have to find, I just uh, put the, the postal address and, uh, and determine if it's a site in Salzburg, I want it to get the wireless configuration branch Europe because RF regulation, if it's a, or the, if it's a gateway, branch Europe also because of tunneling and things like that. If it's a site in, in Mexico, I'll have a different policy. If it's a site in the US, I'll have a different policy. Next step, uh, I create, uh, I, I, I give that job to an installer. Uh, that person is gonna go on site. The only thing that person has to do to bind that device to the group, the site, and so on is scan the barcode. We're going to see it in a second. That eventually leads to our um, devices popping up in the map, as, as you have uh, seen before, to populating that topology. We have some site visibility. You inherit the configuration from the group. You not only inherit the configuration, you can even mandate uh, certain uh, software code. Like the device came out of the box. It, from your DST, God knows which uh, software uh, version it has. It'll connect to Central, and Central will say, ah, if it's in the group Europe, I want this, uh, this uh, firmware to be used because that's what I've standardized for, for that certain type of, of sites, okay? And last part, we'll be able to report, we'll be able to get alerts from, from uh, like email, through email, through Slack, through ServiceNow, like all these, these applications as we were seeing before with the, with the, the, DPS, uh, the DPS demo, right? Yeah, I just want to highlight one problem here in terms of, I don't know if you guys caught on to the first couple of steps. Most of you cringe when we mention the word ZTP, zero touch provisioning, because we understand even though it's zero touch, uh, there's a lot of touches you really have to do. <laughs> we have tried our best to eliminate most of them, because what we understood when we are rolling out the 14,000 site customers, we're talking about multiple countries, they have local contractors and partners that do the installation. The sheer mapping of when we ship devices to a location, and based on the serial number and MAC address, going back to center and mapping, this is supposed to belong to this group, this is supposed to get this configuration. Imagine that for 40,000 location multiplied by 10 devices on average, that itself took a couple of resources. Just that spreadsheet mapping, we completely wanted to eliminate that approach. That's the first step where you can actually go and uh, update all of your locations and map the installers, which we'll demo as well. And then when the device shows up, they automatically based on where you can just scan the device, and based on the GeoIP of the phone, again, you have a GeoIP concern we'll address, we can actually map that to a specific group and you can automatically pull the configuration. You don't have to go and map each serial number and MAC address to a template or a profile or a group. It knows which configuration to pull automatically, which site to go and automatically map itself to. So this part, we are trying to um, get to true zero touch as much as possible. So when we show the demo, it will become even clearer. Yeah. And today there are two approaches. You either have to pre-stage all the equipment in a central location and ship it, or you have to have someone call you and say, this is the MAC address and serial number, and make sure you put it in right. So I think, to Mani's point, we didn't think of simplicity as just simplicity of routing or simplicity of the WAN. We looked at it as how do you simplify store installation, store bring up, um, simplified licensing, simplified pricing. We really tried to make the entire um, sort of the operator experience simple as well. So let's uh, jump to the demo, right? Yeah. So we have here, uh, once again, 
what our, dashboard it is you want to go through. We, once again, we're in Urbis Central. We're not in the network services dashboard as we've been a, long, a, lo a lot of times in this session. We're not in the overview. Here we're just in the install manager uh, uh, section. Install manager section, as I was mentioning before, this project manager view of the, of the network. I have my sites here. And, uh, and I have also my installers. I have a certain, uh, oh, you, you need to uh, Lock. take the, have a certain Maniganisan that uh, I have uh, hired as a, as a contractor, you need, uh, I don't know your phone number, um, to, to do my, my installations here in the, in the area. And what I, all I have is I have my list of sites. I say, hey, network field day. If something shows up in network field A, put it in the group branch. That'll, that, that knows its configuration. I can perhaps do a couple overrides, the host name and maybe a, some uh, static IPs, but it's, for the most part, that is my configuration. The only thing I need to do is just make sure that, that the device I sent to uh, tech field A shows up in the relevant group. I have a palette of devices in my warehouse. I don't want to be taking pictures of MAC addresses or things like that. Mm. So I have hired uh, Mani Ganisan, a little pricey for an installer, but uh, he delivers a good service. <laughs> so um, I've assigned a set of sites to him, and this is his credential. There's no username, there's no password. All that we have here as credential is his mobile number. Okay? Now, uh, can you mm -hmm. open your app here? Uh, yep. So. I just got a text message because he entered my phone number. It's giving me a unique code, which is 76049. You lost it. Oh, you, okay. Uh, so I'm just signing in as an installer, and it shows me all the sites I'm supposed to just scan. If I'm a store manager, if I'm a non-technical person, I don't have to understand Aruba Central. All I need to see is enter the five-digit code, figure out what do I have to do. Let's go to the site I'm supposed to install, the network field day site. I click on this, and there's no devices installed so far. It's brand new. Before you, before you do anything, sure. just, uh, I'm, I'm told not to show CLI here, but just, <laughs> I plugged in the cable so you guys saw that this guy is factory defaulted. Okay, this is, and you see the, the cloud icon blinking here? That's because it's trying to reach the cloud and it doesn't, it, it doesn't know how because we, uh, we, we haven't plugged in the uplink. Okay, so Manny's just doing the installation. We just powered it for the sake of, of uh, speed. Okay, so now you can move on. So we'll go back to the screen. So no devices are there. All I have to do is scan the device that are, I just open up the box and then start scanning the serial number. So in this case, just scan the serial number. It picked it up. And then uh, if I go back and see, it's verifying that it is my device. If you see the green dots, and then it ensures that there is a right license uh, that is available for the device from the cloud. And once I plug in my DHCP-based ISP port, it's... Uh, you went a little bit quick, but that message that, uh, that was shown there was saying the device is yours. That's the first thing we check. The device is licensed. If it's not licensed, it won't talk to Central. We have to run a business. Um, <laughs> <laughs> please plug in, the, plug in the device. So we just plug in the device, and uh, it'll get an IP via DHCP. It'll start... It'll start running, it has to talk to the cloud, get its configuration, and it'll go through. Okay. It parks itself at the right side, it pulls the right configuration in that, and exactly. then it'll show up. As a project manager, you can go back to the installation dashboard and see how many sites uh, were I supposed to deploy this week, how many are pending, how many are still in progress, if there is a failure, what exactly is going on. If there are APs involved in that installation, Actually, I can take a picture, which is yeah. his favorite part, you, so yeah. Yes, exactly. That's a... Uh, that's very nice because sometimes the, the devices, you, I don't know, they, they may be... We have to show the screen. I, I, yeah. This is a two-man demo, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, no, show it. Just, just stand there so they can oh, see. Oh, you, you want me there in the picture? Of course. Okay. You're the installer. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a... Is it dance? You have an evidence of who actually installed it. <laughs> Along with <laughs> so if there's anything wrong with this device, we all know who, who installed it. <laughs> um, oh, that's a very bad thing. <laughs> no, when things go you. bad, they know who to call. And it's on YouTube. <laughs> so the, the interesting part is you want to take, uh, you want to make a note of, 
that take a picture of how the rack looks like after you, you've done your job. You want to take a, look, a picture of where the AP ended up being installed, mm -hmm. that type of stuff. You can even enter the host name from the, from the app itself so that that's one less override that the administrator will have to do. Okay? We see what if the site had this been pre-image of our installer. Sorry. I was just going to ask, what, what if you're, for some reason, not, you can't use DHCP? Is there an option for them to enter the static IP? Yes, the that, that, is a good one. that is a good one. So there's, this guy has four ports. Um, there's, I don't think there's any, any device that doesn't have at least four. But uh, the port 001, which in our case is the second port, is uh, the service port. So if I had, a, let's say, an MPLS circuit that doesn't give me an IP address, Manny would have had to bring his computer, plug himself into port one. It gives him a, like a very, very simple uh, wizard type of workflow where you enter the static IP, or if you're doing PPPoE, you enter the PPPoE credentials and just... So you have the comments. When I actually went to the app, so if it was just simple DHCP, it just helped me plug this cable into this port. But if there's more I have to do, you can actually put them instructions on, just plug into other port, mm. and then this is the IP address you're supposed to enter, and very simple prompt that you have to follow for mm. one-touch provision. Have you guys ever thought about listening to the ARP request for static IP for auto-provisioning when you're having to plug into a carrier circuit mm. with a packet capture so that you could, we've, I've seen that done before where you listen to the, the ARP request to auto provision for a carrier circuit that you'd otherwise have to statically configure ah, to make it zero touch. Not yet, so we are keen on understanding more about that and we can figure out. Yeah. Yeah. Basically just yeah. packet capturing, looking at the yeah. ARP requests that are happening and then putting it into that. Or who's actually initiating the ARP request request? Right, if you happen to see ARP, if you happen to see ARP traffic by you know, whatever the carrier gateway is, that detecting that and actually using that to provision, I've seen that done before, if you have an unsolicited ARP request. Okay, it's time to wrap up. Um, so we had to pick uh, one out of three demos because given the time, but we just at least wanted to show slides of other things we've added. This is a diagnostic troubleshooting part uh, where you can actually give whether it's a control plane troubleshooting or data plane troubleshooting. If it's control plane, just give the source and destination address. If it's data plane, you can give the source port application. It traces the forward path end to end from the source to the uh, destination, and then it traces the reverse path. If we, we actually track a whole bunch of KPIs, is there an ACL drop, is there a routing loop, potential things that could go wrong, and then highlight that. You can click on it and see what could be the potential problem. So that is one thing um, we have just added. And the last is AI Insights. If you remember, Aruba acquired a company called Ned Insight, which actually does a lot of ML AI style techniques where we have a lot of data coming from Wi-Fi, wired, gateway, security firewall. <laughs> so where we can find out where the potential problem could be, provide some baseline recommendations on, hey, I've done this SLA for this policy, so your SLA could be slightly different. For the specific location here, uh, you have very stringent SLA for Skype. If Skype is always bad. Why don't you adjust the SLA? You could do some heat maps on which apps are performing um, badly in certain sites, potential root causes. It gives you possible problem. Again, not just for ST-WAN. It goes all the way into the wired and wireless as well. In this case, we're highlighting a Wi-Fi problem where it shows uh, there is a specific channel issue with 2.4 gig. It doesn't matter where the problem is since we have all the data going back to this point on. Uh, it actually has the same interface for all types of devices. We can tell you where the potential problem could be based on ML and AI technique. So hopefully next time we get to demo this. That's pretty much it, folks. Uh, this is kind of the summary slide we want to wrap up with. We saw a lot of content in two parts, starting off with the ST-WAN overlay orchestrated automatically. Uh, then we talked about different types of branches we have, the micro branch with just the APs, the standard branches. And uh, we talked about how do we orchestrate virtual gateways in public cloud, Amazon Web Services, Azure. Uh, we talked about the SaaS Express features, which optimizes for SaaS applications such as Office 65. Uh, we also showed you our third-party integrations with our cloud security partners. Uh, we showed the ST-LAN, which is the, the coolest part of the demo we thought, where we could actually micro-segment uh, users and cameras in the same VLAN without having to worry about uh, IP addresses. Uh, lastly, we showed the operation, <coughs> how easy it is to troubleshoot the level of visibility you have, all the way from a bird's eye view of the entire network, going into specific sites, going into devices, all the way to a single client. We were troubleshooting uh, my uh, Zoom call on my iPhone, where we were able to see every hop along the path. We showed the demo of that, and uh, also the troubleshooting part. Hopefully that gave you a perspective of what Aruba ST branch really is. And thank you for taking the time. And right now, I want to hand over to our next speaker, Michael Dickman, who's going to talk about AOCX switches.